Considering the other options that are currently available, the Reverpoint Mini 3D Scanner is now quite an expensive option for home 3D scanning. There are two cheaper scanners in the current Revopoint range, so you would assume that this one is their best model. I decided to check it out to see if this scanner was everything you might want from a scanner, if you can afford it. I actually requested this model and Geekbuy and obliged by sending me the premium edition with the dual axis turntable. As I say, Geek Buying sent this to me, I didn't buy it, but as with all my reviews, nobody has any influence over the content except me. If by the end of the video you decide you want to buy one for yourself, then check out the links and discount code in the description where you're guaranteed to get a good deal. As you'd expect, the Reverpoint Mini comes well packaged with quite a few accessories. There's a good manual which explains the setup well, and I was surprised to see there are a number of features that I wasn't expecting. I'll go through all of these as we get to them. Under the manual, I found a test card plus a few leads and adapters, and a couple of sheets of marker dots. The scanner head is inside a protective bag and looks to be a very high quality. Then there's a tripod with a quick release mount for the scanner head and a phone holder. The last thing in the box is a test model for you to scan. Once you've unpacked everything, the manual tells you that the next thing you need to do is download the correct software for whatever device you're using. Unlike some other scanners, you have a lot of connection options with the Reverpoint Mini. The simplest way to start is to plug a USB lead directly into a USB 3 port on a laptop or PC. This provides power for the scanner itself, but also a data connection for the scan information. To be able to see this scan information, you'll need to download the RevoScan software from the RevoPoint website. There are options for connecting to a Mac, but I couldn't test these myself. Once installed, the scanner automatically connects and you're ready to start a new project. I started by scanning the supplied test model using the dual axis turntable. This is a powered turntable which rotates the model while the scanner does its thing. You can simply press the button to start and stop the rotation of the turntable, or if you use Bluetooth, you can connect to it and control it remotely. You have the option of either controlling it within the Revopoint software if your PC or laptop has a Bluetooth connection, or you can control it using a phone and a separate app. Using either method, you can also tilt the bed up to 30 degrees in either direction, which can make scanning all areas of your model much easier. You also have the option of changing the rotation speed with a slider. On the top surface, there's also a number of screw threads for if you wanted to attach any kind of mount that you wanted to design yourself. The only slight downside with the turntable is that it only rotates in one direction, but other than that, it's a great bit of kit. As you would expect, scanning the test model went quite well. It looked as though the scanner hadn't captured all of the detail very well, but after letting the software run through its process of cleaning up the scan, things look much better. The Revopoint Mini picks up three-dimensional detail from a model by projecting a blue-like grid onto the surface and then analysing the image that it sees. The raw data looks like thousands of tiny dots in space. What the Revoscan software then does is fuses many of these dots together to create something that looks a lot more like a solid model, but is actually just more joined together dots. This is known as a point cloud and on its own doesn't actually give you a lot of information that you can use. What you need to do if you're going to do anything with the model is create a mesh. A mesh is lots of triangular surfaces that connect all of the dots together to create one continuous surface. If at any stage there isn't enough information to create a dense enough point cloud, then you'll end up with holes in your mesh. What the RevoPoint software can do is guess where the missing information should have been and try to fill in the holes. It's actually surprisingly good at this, and you can either hit the one-click edit button and let the software make its best attempt at doing everything, or you can go one stage at a time and try different settings at every point to really fine-tune what you end up with. The one-click edit gave me a great result here, and I exported the model as an SDL ready to print. Next, I decided to scan a model that I'd recently 3D printed to compare the result. I scanned this lion in the same way as the test model, but to begin with, I wasn't getting any kind of image. I then realised that the exposure was set to manual and once clicking automatic, up popped an image. I started at the top, rotated the turntable, and then after one complete revolution, moved the camera down and repeated the same process. I continued doing this and then moved the model and continued to scan until I felt that I'd picked up as much detail as I could. Again, I clicked the one click edit button and waited for the result. This time there are actually quite a few holes in the mesh, so I went back a stage and manually filled in some of those holes. It was clear to see that I was going to lose a bit of detail here, but I wanted to see how the result would compare. It is apparently possible to go back and scan the missing areas and then combine the data, but I didn't do that on this model. 
Now that I had two print ready STL files, I decided to print them using my Elegoo Mars 4 Max plus Elegoo's 8K gray resin. I found the result pretty staggering considering how little time I'd spent scanning and then editing the scan data afterwards. There is a very slight softening of the detail on the test bus, but dimensionally it's insanely accurate. I couldn't find a dimension anywhere that was any more than about 0.2 millimeters from the test model. It's a similar story with the Lion with edges being a little softer, but accuracy being amazing. The only areas that weren't right were where there was missing information, but I think you'll agree it did a pretty good job of guessing. So hooked up to a relatively powerful PC, everything works fine, but what about a more portable setup? When I tested out the Creality Ferret scanner, I was frustrated to find that it wouldn't work with my older Android phone or my slightly lower powered laptop. I ended up spending a lot of money on a Samsung S23 Ultra so that I could actually use the scanner away from my desk. There were no such issues with the Reverpoint Mini. A lot of thought has been put into the connection options, and whilst you can plug the scanner into each device, you can also just give the scanner power via USB and then connect to it using your device's Wi-Fi. This makes the whole setup extremely versatile and mobile. What impressed me even more was that I had no problems using my old Samsung Galaxy S8 or my laptop. In fact, the Reverpoint Mini worked faultlessly on every device I could find to try. Mini scanners can't scan black or shiny objects, but with its dark objects mode, the Mini has a really good go, and it's not bad if the light is just right. Unfortunately, because the scanner relies on seeing the blue light reflected back, you can't actually use it outside on a bright day. You also can't get very far away from objects. I tried scanning this bike helmet, which, as it has large smooth surfaces, confused the scanner as it does with all of these types of scanners, until you add markers to give it a reference. The problem is that it always wants to see at least three markers and ideally four. As the scanner also needs to stay relatively close to see the light grid, I found myself having to stick on a huge number of markers just to satisfy both criteria. I gave up after covering half of the helmet in these little dots as my son needed to go out and actually wanted to use his helmet. I can't imagine the amount of dots you need to apply to scan something like a car. To be honest, I just don't think you could do that with this scanner. I then tried scanning a number of different objects with varying degrees of success, but one thing I particularly wanted to try was scanning people. I found the Creality scanner that I tested recently was really good at scanning people, and I know it's something that a lot of users might want to do. Unfortunately, without putting markers all over my son's face, I just couldn't get any kind of cohesive scans out of the Mini. There may be some setting or method that needs changing here, but I just couldn't get it to work. I also tried scanning this wakeboard fin that I wasn't able to scan with the Creality scanner because it just seemed to be too small. Unfortunately, this gave me some of the same issues, which were that I could scan each side individually, but when it came to turning a corner and joining the sides together, the scanner just couldn't figure things out. I tried the marker dots again, which helped the scanner to nearly figure out where the sides were in relation to each other, but unfortunately, the markers left massive holes in the surfaces that made the scan pretty useless without a lot of messing around afterwards. Unfortunately, I'm still looking for a scanner that's capable of scanning this tricky shape. So after quite a lot of testing, let's look at some of the pros and cons of the Revopoint Mini 3D Scanner. For the positives, this scanner is great for accurately scanning small intricate details on objects that fit on the turntable. The detail reproduction is superb and you really can scan and reproduce small objects if you have a 3D printer. It has really capable software, so there's no need to use anything else like Mesh Mixer, like I've had to do with some other scanners. Connecting pretty much any device is really easy and extremely reliable, and the Wi-Fi option is really robust and useful. I didn't have a single connection issue through the whole of my testing, which I can very rarely say. When it comes to the hardware, the dual axis turntable is fantastic, and being able to control it wirelessly makes the whole scanning process far more controlled. I also really like the button on the back of the scanner head, which enables you to start, stop, and pause scans without reaching for a phone or keyboard while trying to hold still. Unfortunately though, I did find a few negatives. Some colors just simply won't scan. I tried scanning this Nerf gun, and while the white scanned pretty well, the orange just simply didn't register. To get this color to scan, I would probably have to coat the part in an expensive scanning spray, which basically just turns it a matte white. Using the dark mode, I did manage to scan some black objects, but then other objects that were made of the exact same material wouldn't scan at all. And although small items scan well, the Revopoint Mini just isn't a good option for larger objects. 
The scanner has to be too close to see the light grid, which means that it just can't keep track of where it is on big objects without hundreds of marker stickers everywhere. I also found that with some objects on the turntable, the scan information wouldn't always line up properly after a full 360 degree turn. The software often corrects this, but sometimes it doesn't and you just have to start again. You also can't scan outside, and I found I often had to turn off the studio lights to help the scanner see the light grid. In conclusion, I would say that if you want to scan small, single colour, non-shiny objects on a turntable, then the Revopoint Mini is great and you'll likely have fantastic results. However, if you want to scan anything which falls even slightly out of this criteria, then you're not going to have a lot of joy. For the cost of this scanner, I was hoping for a bit more versatility. If it looks like the Revopoint Mini might be just right for what you want in a 3D scanner, then check out the links in the description for a good deal. Otherwise, check out this video where you can see what I thought of Creality's latest offering. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.